Obviously, the, the Palestinian move with the United Nations has put Israel a bit in a diplomatic corner. However, I don't think that we're as isolated as we often feel that we're, we, we are. And I'll just give you a few examples over the last six or eight months to show that we're not that isolated. Again, we, are, we have a sense of isolation, but on the, when you look at what's happening on the ground, it's not as bad as it seems. A couple examples. First of all, the flotilla. Remember the flotilla back in May? Everybody thought that this thing was going to be a huge disaster for Israel. We stopped the flotilla because other countries did our work for us, right? Greece wouldn't let the boat sail. There was no flotilla, okay? If we were that isolated, then Greece and Cyprus would have let the boat sail. They weren't willing to do that. Uh, that's one example. The, the Mavi Marmara incident, uh, the Palmer Committee, the Palmer Committee of the United Nations. When is the last time you remember the United Nations Committee came up with a report that was actually a bit favorable to Israel or didn't slam Israel completely? Right? We, see, we saw that with the, Marvi, with, with, the, with the Palmer Committee Commission, which looked at the Mavi Marmara incident, the flotilla with the Turks coming and the nine Turks who were killed when they attacked our guys. Again, that's an example of, and there you had the former Prime Minister of New Zealand, and the former president of Colombia, right? We got a fair shake there. We got a fair shake. In July, in July, the quartet met. And the quartet, the, uh, the, 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 the quartet couldn't get to an agreement, right, on what, what should be done as far as the diplomatic process. Um, Israel was hoping that, uh, that, uh, that the, the quartet would come out and say that the Palestinians need to recognize Israel as a Jewish state. The Palestinians wanted the quartet to come out with a clear statement saying that the baseline for the negotiations has to be the 1967 lines. They weren't able to reach an agreement, right? They did force that down our throat. So I, <coughs> I think, and, 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 and the re most recent example is that the United Nations. Everybody thought that Israel was going to go to the United Nations or the Palestinians were going to go to the United Nations and the United Nations was just going to kind of bow down and say to the Palestinians, whatever you want, we're going to give you, except for the U.S. who would veto it. What do we see instead happen? We see that the Palestinians are having difficulty getting nine positive votes in the Security Council in order for them to force the U.S. to use a veto. Okay, so if we were completely isolated, then countries like Germany, France, Britain, Portugal, Colombia, they wouldn't be voting, uh, voting for us or abstaining in the vote. So, so again, we're in a difficult diplomatic situation because there's no peace process, okay, but I don't think it's as bad as we often think it is. Look, as Israelis and as Jews, we always like to feel that we kind of can control the situation. I think this is one situation where we have very little control. There's very little we can do. You know, we couldn't do anything to impact what went on in Egypt. We couldn't do anything to impact what's going on in Syria. I think we have to realize the limitations of our ability here to shape events in the region, which are going to have a huge impact on us. I think the government, since the beginning of what's been called the Arab Spring, the government has taken a conscious decision not to be out there. I right? take a very low profile because I think this is one of the times where we're just going to have to sit back watch how things develop, and they're going to take time to develop, and then, then respond to them. But I don't think we have much of an ability to impact on those events. Now, there will be those in Europe who will say, well, that's not right. You can't impact on the events. If you would just make a peace agreement with the Palestinians, then, then everything would work out fine. I think that's a little naive, right? I think we're going to make a peace, a peace agreement with the Palestinians. It's not going to impact on the elections, whether they're going to be elections in, in Egypt. It's definitely going to have no impact on Syria. Right. So I think that's a little uh, rather naive. I think we have to sit back, we have to wait and see how things develop, and then we have to react. Look, I think I mean, as far as Egypt is concerned, I think the world has to make clear to Egypt that if, if Egypt wants to have a proper relationship with the West, they have to maintain the peace agreement with Israel. I think that's, I think that's something that's, that's in everybody's interest. I think it's in our interest. I think it's in the West's interest. It's in Egypt's interest. I think, that, that, I think that, that needs to be articulated very clearly. I think it is, by the way, being articulated very clearly. Um, Egypt's involvement in the Gilad Shalit mediation, I think, was to a large extent an attempt to show the world that hey, you know, we're still there. We're, we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not through with the Middle East. We're not uh, completely different than we used to be. We want to play a positive role. I think that's one thing. I think the other thing that the West and Germany and France and Europe has to, has to keep in mind is that you can't force democracy overnight. Right? It's not enough to have an election. And I think they, I think I think what's, what's what's incumbent upon the West now 
is to come to these countries and say, have an election when you're ready for an election. You don't want to, you want to force an election before it's time. I heard somebody say something very interesting once. He said, in the Middle East, uh, uh, in the Middle East government motel, right? The Islamic, in, in, in the Middle East democracy motel, the Islamic radicals check in, but they never check out which means they win the election, and that's it. That's the last election. Look what happened in Gaza. Look what's going to happen in Lebanon. You have to be careful. The, 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 the conditions are set on the ground so that if you have an election, it's not the last election that there will ever be.